Drone Racing League is the highest level of professional drone racing in the world. It transforms Major League Baseball stadiums around the U.S. into state-of-the-art drone racing tracks using the very structure of the stadium itself as part of the course. This year, the championship race is in Miami, Florida in the Marlins Stadium. I was given press access to go onto the track before the race and interview each of the racers before what will be the largest drone race ever to take place with nearly 15,000 tickets sold. Join us in this series to take you inside the mind of the fastest flying racers in the ultimate test of skill, concentration, and technology. Okay, I'll be conducting the interview by <laughs> We're here with Alex Vanover at the Drone Racing League Championships. Going into tonight, you've been here a number of times before. How has this season been different from the other one? You know, it's a great question. I think this season has been probably the most challenging season I've had. We've, we've had so many great races and the competition level has really risen this year. But for me, you know, I've just been so short on so many races in IRL that I'm really, really hungry for this win. And I'm hoping that tonight, if I can get that win, it'll just make all that worth it. DRL has instituted the new first flight, just like baseball's first pitch. The NFL's fastest player. Joining our 2019 DRL world champion, Van Over. Here is Miami Dolphins wide receiver, Tyreek Hill. Alex Vanover is the 2019 DRL champion and he dominated hobby racing for years. Going into DRL finals, he is the most well-known pilot on the roster, but that's because he's become the premier pilot for Hollywood blockbuster movies. Shooting, for those that don't know, a lot of the footage for Michael Bay's movie, Ambulance. Mm -hmm. So now, is drone racing your side gig mm. or is Hollywood your side gig? You know, I think for a minute I was kind of putting drone racing on the back foot because, you know, my day job is making movies and doing stuff like that, and it certainly keeps me busy. I mean, I moved out to California for that. Seriously, drone work is really boring in movies, and I wanted to hip it up. I found this 19-year-old kid. He's an amazing drone racer, and I said, all right, dude, you're going to fly. Go right under that car. You're going to time it perfectly. He goes, do I get to practice? I said, no, once, because I'm jumping the car once. You're going to get it right. Audiences on an international stage, whether they know his name or not, were able to see his work for the first time getting live action flying shots that would have before had to be created in CGI. I never worked with a drone indoors. Going uh, right by their legs and yeah, yeah, like underneath things and then coming up and knowing and having to time it right. But you know, as we started the season in San Jose and I, you know, took myself out in the lead of a golden heat, after that moment, I had that fire back under me for the first time and since probably really 2019. And it just feels great to be back out here with that passion that I had years ago to be the best drone racing pilot and to go out there and prove to myself really that I still have what it takes and not just that but really to be the very best. Vanover dominated both the hobby and professional levels of drone racing for years. That is until Evan Heads Up Turner came onto the scene and took over where Vanover left off. This year is unique. The championship is left open as Evan Turner is commentating this year, but not racing. That means that the championship is up for grabs. If Vanover is going to retake his title, this is the best shot he has. Uh, has your practice schedule changed being on set? Do you now bring a laptop and a radio so you can sim while you're there in the off hours? What does it look like? Well, when I'm on set, I'm pretty busy. I'm, I'm, I'm a pro probably more of a popular guy on set with the drone when I'm there. But honestly, coming up into my training camp for this level here specifically, I actually turned down all filming work for about three weeks, which is something that, you know, can be a self-detrimental thing in this industry because it's a very competitive industry and you're just allowing other people to then take that spot, right? But for me, that was what I needed to do to really prove to myself how much do I really want to go out there and win this? Because, you know, for lack of a better term, excuse my language, but I didn't want to half-ass this, right? You know, I wanted to come out here and if I'm convincing myself that this is my passion and I want to be the very best, then I had to cut out everything else in my life and just focus on doing that. And that's what I did leading up to this level. I cut out all film work for three weeks, got back to my normal training regimen, over 100 batteries a day, every day, and I'm ready to go show people, the, you know, the hard work that's been done. See, folks, that's what it takes. It's not about talent. It's about hard work yep. and being able to put it in and execute.
But going into DRO finals, this is not a movie set. This is racing. And while he has shown how serious he is this year, his natural talent and that focus practice be enough to compete with Alex FPV, Min Chan Kim, and Halo Walker, who may be putting in those same practice numbers year round. I think it makes me think of Mortal Kombat, where Johnny Cage was a Hollywood star, but he wanted to go prove that he still had what it takes to win in the tournament and that feels like you're the hollywood star that wants to see you wants to prove it's kind of interesting because being the drl and multi-gp champion mm. is kind of what made a lot of those directors want you mm. in the first place but now that you've secured that i could see how it might not be as important but this year you want to show one more time that you have it absolutely if you you know listen i'm very grateful to be here i'm grateful when i make the podium but if you think that I go home satisfied with standing second or third, you're highly mistaken because I put in so much hard work and dedication and this sport is my passion. There's nothing else in the year that I look forward to more than showing up in drone racing. And I've been reinvigorated with that passion more than ever leading into Miami. So I will only be fully satisfied if I'm on that top step, but make no mistake about it, Johnny. If I stand on that top step tonight, I may not be the world champion. It might be Min Chan, it might be Halo Walker. But when everyone goes home tonight, I want you guys out there, you critics and everything like that, saying Min Chan's the best, Halo's the best. Just remember one thing. If I stand on that top set tonight, I have more IRL season points than any other pilot this year. Third season in a row. So when you're talking about who's the best drone racing pilot, you have to put my name on that list and give me that credit because this sport means the world to me. And I'm trying to, I want to stay humble, but I have to put that out there because I've seen a lot of people online talking about that. So talk about Min Chan and them being the best because if I go out there and beat them, you keep that same narrative going. That's absolutely right. So we want to see how it's going to go down. And so we have to give all the credit, whoever comes out on yep. top, including you. So good luck tonight. Yep. You've been here a number of times. Does it feel nervous at all? I mean, I think every pilot has a little bit of, you know, that nervous feeling when you're going into the races. Right now I'm in a great state of mind. I basically just hit the reset switch on everything that's happened in this season. I'm just focusing on this race being my Super Bowl, the one that I can go out and win. I'm confident that I've prepared myself to the best of my abilities. My mental game is better than it's ever been. So if I go out there and I put all my chips on the table, I feel like I should get that win. But if, God forbid, I don't, then at least I know that I tried my best. So when I'm out there racing, there's not going to be nerves. It's just going to be pure focus, pure adrenaline to get me first in that finish game. Now, we've seen a lot of growth of all the racers, including you especially. But what about the growth of the league itself? Van Over being so successful internationally really rose the awareness for the entire sport of drone racing. The production is getting better and better each year. This is probably, as far as I know, the biggest drone race that's yeah. ever been held anywhere in the world. What does it feel like to be a part of that league and help it grow? Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of it, to be honest. And I'm proud of all the pilots who've come together and have really, you know, all the time that we spend training, you know, in our backyards or wherever it is, to make ourselves the best that we could possibly possibly be for these races. I mean, that's why we're able to help grow this sport because we're putting on entertaining races for the fans and that's making people want to come back to see us crash, to see the rivalries, to see the sport where it is tonight, where we're going to have over 10,000 people in that audience cheering, booing us, whatever it is. That shows us that our sport is truly on our trajectory to be one of the biggest sports in the world. And I've been saying it all night, Johnny. I truly believe that drone racing fans are the best fans in the world. It's because we have the best sport. We're out here putting on such an entertaining, you know, atmosphere and environment. So truly, you know, to see the amount of growth has been just absolutely incredible. And look at how young our sport is, right? We're like a five year old sport, really, really in that professional level. Look back to when the NFL and the NBA started. Look at where their growth was in the first five years. Look at that compared to drone racing. Do your homework because I'm telling you, drone racing is going to be one of the biggest sports. And maybe I'll be too old by the time it gets to that point. So I'll be, you know, holding the mic. And you know we'll be interviewing everyone together, but you know, make no mistake about it, I'm, I'm really honored to be one of the pilots growing the sport. Well, everyone's going to remember you as one of the founding members, and it is cool to see the trajectory. So good luck to you tonight and Sweet. everyone else. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Appreciate man. You. See you. To see more of this series, subscribe so that you don't miss the other big interviews with the DRL racers leading up to the championship. Catch Amari, MCK, Halo Walker, Alex FPV, and the rest here on the Johnny 5 FPV channel.